Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and I've got another tricky question for you today. This one is from uh, June 2022, NXL AS Stats, and it is on discrete random variables. And I know a lot of people find this particular topic tricky um, because of the notation. Um, so uh, let's give it a go. So we have uh, the random variable R represents the score when the red spinner is spun and the random variable G represents the score when the green spinner is spun. So um, what this means is, is that for the red spinner there are two possible outcomes, two and three, and the chance of getting a two is a quarter and the chance of getting a three is three quarters. And for the green spinner there's two outcomes, one and four, the chance of getting a one is two thirds, the chance of getting a four is one third. Okay, um, and then it says that Mahon, um, Manon spins each spinner once and adds the two scores together. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to let S be the, um, uh, the sum uh, of the two scores, like so, and then for part A, I, we need the probability that S is equal to seven. Well, how are we gonna get seven uh, by spinning these two spinners uh, once each? Uh, we're gonna need the red to be three and we're gonna need the green to be four. That's the only way we're gonna add them up to get seven. So we're gonna need the probability of R to equal three and then multiplied by the probability of G to equal four. That's the only way that's going to happen. We've got times the two probabilities because we need them both to happen um, one after the other. So the red being three is three quarters and the green being four is one third. So multiply those two together, we get one quarter as our answer. Okay, fairly straightforward. And let's move on to part two. Um, the sum of the two scores is less than four. So we need the probability that S is less than four. Um, okay, so how are we gonna get less than four? Well, um, obviously if the green is four, then it's not less than four. So the green definitely is gonna have to be one. Um, and then if the red is three, then that's not less than four um, because three plus one is four. So the red is going to have to be two. Um, so less than four can only happen if the probability of, uh, sorry, if the red is two and the green is uh, one. Okay, so this is going to give us um, one quarter for red being two and two thirds for um, green being one. And that gives us a total of one over six. Okay, great. So there we go, there's three marks in the bag. And now the next part, um, which is the tricky bit, part B, it says the random variable X is equal to M times R plus N times G, where M and N are integers. And we get the probability that x is 20 equals a sixth and the probability that x equals 50 equals a quarter. Find the value of m and n. Okay. Um, so, r and g are these two variables from the first part. Now, um, they are gonna give us some values and if they give us values such that when we add them together after we've times them by n and n respectively and we get 20 the chance of that happening is a sixth um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually write a distribution for the sum uh, variable so I'm going to write s up here uh, and we're going to type write in as much as we can possibly can for what the sum of the two r and g are going to make. So we know already the lowest possible value that we could get is 3 uh, for s uh, and then we're going to write the probability that uh, s equals s and that happened when we did the less than 4 part because we had a 2 and a 1 
and that gave us the probability of a sixth. Um, so what other values could we get for s? Uh, we know we can get seven, which was the largest we could possibly get. That was a quarter. Um, and we could get six by doing uh, r is two and g is four. Times in those together will give us a twelfth. And the other option would be um, three and one, which would give us four. Um, when you multiply these two together, um, we would get a, a half. Okay, so those are all of the um, those are all of the options. So we we want something which is, has a probability of a sixth happening. Well, I mean the only event where we roll the spinner for R and for G and the outcome has the probability of a sixth is if the sum is free, uh, like this. This is the only time that we're gonna get the probability of a sixth happening. Uh, and when we do get that probability happening after using both R and uh, G, we will get an outcome, or a score of three. So in this instance, uh, R was equal to uh, 2 and G was equal to 1. So we could say that um, X is 20 and it's also equal to M times R. Well, R was 2 in this instance and N times G, well, G was 1. So we get this. Okay, now let's look at the next box. Uh, and it's saying that there is uh, some combination, something happens where we roll R and we roll G and we get a probability of a quarter happening. Well, this, the only time that we get the probability of a quarter happening is if the summation of the two is seven and that's brought about by R being uh, three and G being four. Okay, so that gives us the probability of a quarter. Uh, and that's the only way we get the chance of a quarter happening. And that means that 50 is the outcome. And that happens when R is free. So 3 times M is 3M. And G is 4. So G times uh, N is 4N. Okay, so we've got a nice set of simultaneous equations here. I'm going to multiply this set by 4. Um, to get this and then I'm just going to keep this one the same uh, and then I'm going to subtract these two equations uh, and that's going to give us 30 is equal to 5m so therefore m is equal to 6 and then let's just substitute up into this one so we're going to get uh, 20 is equal to 2m is 2 times 6 which is 12 plus n so it follows that n is equal to 8. And there we have it. So I think quite a tricky question, that one, particularly for an AS paper. But with that being said, don't sleep on those AS papers because they're really good practice, even if you're doing A2. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Bye for now.